Okay, well, thanks everyone. Um, so, um, I've been to three of the presentations this morning and um, they're all a lot better than mine, I can tell you that for a start. <laughs> um, Strong start. Um, I'd love to tell you that I've got, I'm releasing some code, some, some fantastic code that will, um, you know, that you can all take away and use and hack the universe. Uh, there's no code, right, okay? Um, and most of them, there were two people in there, which is always good because if you forget what you're going to say next, you know, then I, it was just me. Um, but what what I think what I think I would like to do is just make it a bit more interactive um, than than the sessions this morning. Um, it's you know it, it's different in a sense that particularly the last session that I went to, which was like a mile deep uh, in terms of the Windows kernel, uh, lost me after about two minutes. No. It was good, really good presentation. Well, this my, mine's probably the the opposite end of the spectrum in that it's uh, a mile wide, but not really very deep. There's a, there's a there's a few little technical bits in there that, 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 that for, for the techie people, but but it's 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 really trying to look at a kind of broader, more philosophical. So um, that's what that's the intention. Um, a bit about me. Um, I worked in in, in IT security. For about 14 years, I had a career change when I was 40. Um, came into this, uh, and I, you know, I really do enjoy enjoy the business. I enjoy it. The, the the big thing is that something new is coming along all the time. You get to meet lots of new stuff, play with new new toys, and it's it just it just appeals to me. So um, no regrets about doing that. Um, I've worked all over the place, and um, so what I want to do is um, talk about two things really I'll see if this see if this thing works um, no nope, broke it already uh, okay I need to press escape or get rid of all that screen stuff okay and then press F5 got it to big again F5 was it for oh dear it looked like it swapped the screens around Tech support. I hate, I hate PowerPoint. Uh, <laughs> While he's doing that, there is a prize. I have got a prize, which is on the theme because the, the basic the, the basic theme is around. Does it get worse before it gets better? Okay. Duplicate, yeah. We're still in some sort of weird presentation mode. What does that do? Stop and start again. Yeah. Slideshow. From the beginning. Let's go. It's a very good place to start. It is. What are we doing? Yes. No. Hey. Ah, that's it. Okay. So, 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 so thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so it's basically in two parts. If we get that far, um, and as I say, the, you know, the, 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 it's, it's, it's looking at us in this broadest possible sense and comparing the world that we are in now, which is this world of cyber security, not that particularly like that word, and then comparing that really to um, everything that happened before, basically, security through through the ages, uh, and what can we learn, what, what does it tell us, because I, I do feel that sometimes we can, especially people you know, who are really, really technically involved in this business, it does become all-consuming, and... Um, I think it, I think you can step outside that, and and and, and it really, that really does um, help you to get, get some perspective <coughs> about where you are, what we're doing, uh, how things are going, uh, and then the second part of it really is about what I think has happened in the time that I've been involved in, in this business, uh, and and a lot, yeah, you know, I mean a lot of stuff has happened, but effectively, at a, at, at the most basic level of all. Really, when I came in in 2003, it was about stopping viruses spreading. That, that was essentially what we were doing. Um, and that's gradually got less and less. It hasn't gone away because, you know, want to cry. I'll come on to that. But um, what we're more, more concerned around now is stopping hackers hacking. Effectively. So, so this, this presentation is from a defender's point of view um, and, and looking at... Um, What's happened in that time? I put malware milestones. It's, more, it's, it's a bit broader than that. It's a significant events that I've seen that I think have, have, have changed 
the nature of what we do. Uh, and basically, a lot of the time that I've been doing this, I've been working in security operations. I've worked in nine different security operations since 2009, pretty much all sectors, public sector, private sector. So, you know, what, what works and what doesn't work. And um, <clears throat> but, uh, if, if I get, if I start get, getting, you know, <laughs> somebody can just, just, just yeah, <laughs> just throw that over me and I'll see, see if we can, yeah, get back to some kind of rational uh, discourse. Right. Okay. So, so that's the plan. Where, where we get with it, I have got no idea. Um, this is probably the worst slide uh, in the history of uh, uh, any kind of presentation whatsoever. I did, I did want, to, I did have this idea that I was going to put all these different things: uh, history, philosophy, architecture, genetics, maths, uh, into some kind of like an animated GIF with a blender, and then and then un and out <coughs> this this wonderful kind of philosophy of IT security. Uh, you can see how far I got with that. Not very far at all. Insert clever animation here. Right, okay. But, but it, 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 you know, again, it's coming back to this thing of a mile wide, maybe, in, uh, you know, just an inch deep. So, where do we start? Where do we start with all this? I love this picture. I, I really do. Um, anybody? Trojan, Trojan horse. horse. Trojan horse. And this, the Trojan horse. And, uh, and the story, it's, it's a great story. I mean, they, the, the Greeks laid siege to the city of Troy. I don't know. 5,000 years ago or something um, and they couldn't they couldn't break it down you know they just they were just going at it for years and years and years and then they gave up and then they leave this giant uh, wooden horse outside the gates of Troy all the ships sailed off uh, and the people there thought, oh, they're, they're, um, were they Spartans I think they were called uh, I can't remember pulled it pulled the horse inside they were there was a big party, which I think is what's going on here, because the siege had been lifted. Um, and you got, you know, even though it's 5,000 years ago, still, still fairly similar to today. You've got senior management here with a, you know, with the good seats and, and all the rest of us down here. And, uh, and, and, this, and then, of course, the, the moral of the story, the, the, you know, the moral of the story. Inside the Trojan horse was what? Soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it going to appear? Ta -da! What does it tell us? Um, and the the, the, the the troops. I think they waited. Came out of the. I came out of the Trojan doors. Opened the doors, and the siege. You know, they took the city. Uh, uh, and that, to me, is is what it what it means. <coughs> you know, what what it tells us. No one really knows if this actually happened. I mean, they, there was a there was a firm in German archaeologist who actually found where the city was, so they proved that there was a city there. But whether this really did happen in the way they said it happened, nobody really knows. And actually, it doesn't matter because what you know, it's it's the moral of the story. And I think this tells us a lot about what's happened in our business, which is that again, when I came into this. Most companies, big companies certainly, had firewalls and AV, right? Firewalls and AV, you've got nothing to worry about. You're safe. You're safe. Because, and, and, and they, you know, they were reasonably, reasonably safe. Um, but, as we now know, the world that we are in is that what the attackers have done is that they've, you know, they've effectively bypassed all this. So, so they're, gonna, they're using deception. Which is what this wooden horse was, and and um, if you want, you know, with the analogy is that the troops are, are the payload. In, you know, um, the horse is the on the surface of it appears to be all nice and lovely, and they, you know, let's let's bring this horse in, but um, actually, it's 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 not. So so this this is one of the central themes of the talk. It's really around. Deception is, 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 is absolutely critical to what we do as defenders, which we're trying to make sure that we are not deceived. Um, there's a famous book by Kevin Mitnick, one of the you know, most famous uh, hackers. Anybody read that? Yeah. Is it, I've not read it, is it? Yeah, it's a really good book. It's a good book? Yeah, yeah it's nice. Yeah. The main social engineering stuff as well, so it's uh, accessible as well. Mm. Right, okay. I, it's, what, it's on my list of things, you know. But I, 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 I have a good, uh, you know, good recommendations uh, about that. Um, 
And, and, and I've got to put a quote on there. All warfare is deception. Anybody? Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? Yeah, well, he's, he's in line for the prize. <laughs> You're going to regret that. So, so, and it is actually the law. It is the law uh, in, in IT security that you, if you do a presentation, you have to have a quote by some two. <laughs> Otherwise, you are excommunicated from the community. So I've got mine in early. You're all right. Um, he's a good guy. I think I have to point it that way, don't I? Right, okay, so so that was then, this is now, and this is this is what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, right? This is it, you know. Oh, we've got an email from VHL, you yeah. know. Got the logo on. It's gotta be it's gotta be right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that that forms part of a lot a lot of people who are defenders who are working in this business, a lot of the time is you're looking at stuff and saying, you know, is you know, is that really is that really what it says it is? Um Here's another one. Right, this is this is a bit more tricky. So you're looking at you're looking at a file. Somebody's give you a file and goes, Steve, what? Have a look at this. Will you? What what is it? You know. And you look at the exit data. Well, it's Microsoft. It's Microsoft. It says it is. Look, it's, got, it's even got a proper. It's even got a proper product version and it's, you know, it's a plausible name. So that's got to be right, isn't it? Ex executable. It's got to be. Yeah. Anybody? Anybody seen that one? Um, well, that's what it is. That's the exit data for for that thing, which appeared uh, on the twelfth of May. Um, they try their best. They try their best to make it look as plausible as possible. Um, but it's clearly you know, not <laughs> not that Microsoft. Uh, just just modern deception. Um, I've got to I've got to put this anecdote in. Um, absolutely true story. On the twelfth of May, there I was at work, and on a conference call uh, with my team, and um, not particularly paying attention. Probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> but I've got a, a, I, I've got a Twitter feed now. First th first thing I have to hold my hand up and say, uh, in terms of Twitter, I did come late to the party in terms of Twitter, and I would anybody who's who's who's, who's relatively new to this. There is so there is a lot of good stuff on there, and a lot of the stuff you you look at it and you don't you know a, a bit like the last talk that I went to this morning. You you just pick up. You're not going to understand absolutely everything that that, that that these people are saying on there, but you do get a sense. And and one of one of the ones that I follow is payload security. I really do like hybrid analysis. I think it's you know great free tool. Um, and there it was on the call, and this appeared. I'm not heard a wanna cry, um, but what? What got me, and this was about three o'clock in the afternoon, ransomware allegedly hit a large telecom today, or telecom. Now, that, you know, that, that, that was, that's fairly unusual. I mean, ransomware, lots of people get ransomware, but large, large telecom to get hit with that, not, so I'm interested. And there's a sample on there, and that's one of the great things I like about hybrid. If you've got a free account and people share um, samples, you, you know, if you know, if you Careful, you can download that sample, which I did, uh, and you can have a look at it and just say, oh, no, this, this looks quite interesting. And so what I did was I had a look through that, uh, and there was the, the famous kill switch in there, which is now, you know, we all know that. I had a look at that URL, and, and I put that into our own sandbox, and looked at it, and it came back, and it did a DNS lookup, nothing there, and I'm like, That's, that, is a, that is strange. I've not seen that before. Because I'm, I'm, you know what it's like. You have to stop yourself you, because you do these things all the time. You, you can't think, oh, I know this is going to be the C two. Let's see what it. Let's see what. Let's see what gets delivered from this. Um, and of course, nothing gets delivered. So I, I, on the Friday night, I was still thinking about this. Thinking, that's a strange thing, and that that's a strange thing. It's hard coded in the in the executable. What what were they thinking of? And then of course, I wake up Saturday morning and. It was mentioned in one of the speeches this morning that this guy, I love the description that they gave of him this morning, he's now the James Bond of cyber security. <laughs> it could have been me. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I know, if I, when, at the time when I, when I, I've still got it, it's still, if you, if you go into our sandbox and have a look on the 12th of May, you'll see my name, you'll see submission, it's there, it wasn't registered. Had I registered it, 
Yeah. There'd, there'd be about a thousand people in there now. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Um, but yeah, uh, modern deception. Okay. Um, j- just want to stretch this analogy a little bit more. Um, <coughs> it, uh, you know, a few thousand years later, we've still got the same basic idea. You know, there's, in, this is your firewall here. Um, but we've also added in now an extra layer of security, which is the building in the centre there, which is where we're keeping the crown jewels. And, and we use that term, right, don't we? We use the term in, in security a lot. You know, where are your crown jewels? So um, what we're saying now is, and again, this is the world I think that we're living in, is, as a, you know, we're making it so that we're accepting as defenders that attackers are going to get over this wall. Um, and we're going to try as best we can to, you know, with the kill chain to keep them as far, far, far back on that kill chain as we possibly can. But we have to accept that some of them are going to get in. So we need more security internally to protect the really important assets that we have, the crown jewels. And that's that's what they were doing in, term, in physical terms. Uh, I don't know, whenever the Tower of London was built. So. Um, no one's gonna. No one will get this one. But um, that's that's uh, a more recent uh, example. Any, anybody want to hazard a? It's a tough one. That one. That is really tough. That's the thing in the US. That uh, it's a good guess. It's a good guess. I think you've got to have a look at. There's a few little coups there, but and also I don't, I'm not sure what language that is. Uh, but that, that's actually the Bank of Bangladesh. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, um, and what 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 were the crown jewels in terms of the bank of Bangladesh? I think my it's a Swift. Uh, attack I think it was, yeah, Swift. Swift. That's what they were after. Yeah. So getting getting into the bank of Bangladesh itself is not actually going to get you too much. But I don't know if anybody else read this. If 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 anyone uh, can can you know uh, collaborate uh, corroborate this, but. The, one of the one of the many reports I read was that there were actually three separate groups that compromised this bank, and they're all vying basically, um, and which is why when it when it came, when the, when the reports came out, uh, it was it was a little bit confusing in terms of attribution. Who was who? And the reason why I think there was that confusion was that there were three different hackers on three different sets of hackers on there. One of them did get to the crown jewels. One of them got to the Swift network, and. Um, they stole a lot of money. Oops, just go back. Um, they would have got away with the best part of a billion dollars. That's that's not a trivial sum of money. I think in the end they got away with sixty million. Was it? Something. Right. So they literally got away with sixty million. They don't know. And it was it was it, it was some. It was the weekend, I think, as well. Yeah. And what what was the word that they? It was. I think it was some guy in Germany that that, that sent that, that sent it back and saying, "Yeah, I think you spelt the word like foundation wrong or something like that, wasn't it?" Yeah. Yeah. Huge sum of money. We. D- I, I don't know. Um, but um, essentially, the same kind of point is that they were once they, they were, you know. Once they're on the inside, that in itself is not enough. You need need to protect extra protection around the uh, the, the really important stuff that you've got in our case, it's data. Uh, and also, again, coming back to ransomware, um, you you don't necessarily just need to take the crown jewels. And um, this this is the modern thing, right? Again, back to WannaCry. This is WannaCry, and and uh, that's what people were doing in the Middle Ages. I, I mean, I think the only I think the only difference is that. Whereas now um, we have a kind of moral indignation about it, then it was just seen as the rules of the game. You know, that's what you did. If you if you if you captured someone's castle and you took the king ransom, you just had to pay. You know, that, that's basically how it was. Right. Um, quiz time then. This is completely left field. Nothing to do with IT security. Any ideas, anybody? Totally unfair. Totally unfair question, Steve. That is, that is, that is uh, Gregor Mendel, who, who is the father of genetics. What has that got to do with IT security? What is what drugs is this man on? Peas. Uh, he's, he's what, sorry? Peas, mainly. Peas. 
Peas. <laughs> that was it. Well done. Yeah. He spent eight years experimenting with peas. He, he was he was um, trying to understand how genetics works. Um, there is no there is no user guide, right? There's no whoever 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 coded this did not leave any comments. There's no manual, so you're gonna have to work it out yourself. Um, what do you need in order to get that certainty? Absolutely predict what genetics this you know the next the next generation will have. You need all those skills. You need time. You need patience, logic, discipline. You probably have to sacrifice some of your social life. Um, and and how does that relate to what we do? I think particularly the the question of, of attribution. So where we detect an intrusion, we pull together all the evidence. Um, we may, all we may have in, in the case of WannaCry is, is an executable, right? That's, that might be all we have. So how do we then find out who done it? Who is it that's doing it? That can, that can take a long time. Um, I don't know, has anybody used anything like Ida Pro or Immunity or uh, Oli Debug, those kind of things? If you take an executable and run it, run it through one of those, even, even a small one like, like WannaCry, 3 Meg, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of lines, right? Blow by blow account what happens in the processor. That takes, you know, I've only touched, I've only touched the surface of this thing. To then be able to then look at other examples with hundreds of thousands of lines and say, well, actually, you know what, this is, this is the same firm we're doing this. That, that, that's almost the same type of skill as, 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 as what we're talking about here. Um, fairly similar kind of thing if you're doing if you're doing forensics on a machine like this, the user, whether we're looking for you know some kind of illegal activity or fraud or whatever, there's an awful lot of data on there. Um, it, it, if you want certainty, it's going to take time. Uh, and then while I was doing this, I found this, this quote about AI, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and it just, again, it seemed to me to chime perfectly with, with, with what uh, Gregor Mendel did, which, you know, enormously experimental process that involves extensive trial and error and not, enormous amounts of hardware. Um, same, same thing, basically. Uh, and my favorite quote on genetics, which you can't read because it's on the bottom of the screen, is if you want to live a long and healthy life, what's the best thing to do? Um, and the answer is uh, choose your parents carefully. <laughs> right. Okay. Another one. Another one. From, we're, we're gradually, we, we've covered 5,000 years. We're now in the 20th century. You'd be glad to know. So 1905. This, this thing arrives. Anybody? Anybody else? Diamond. Is what? Cullinan That's the Cullinan diamond, yeah. Um, great story, I love this story. Um, absolutely true. They discovered the, the largest, still the largest clear diamond ever found. 600 and something grams, 3,000 carats. That's the kind of replica of it. You can just imagine that, that, that being one serious bit of jewelry, right? Um, and they discovered it in South Africa and they, the plan was to give it to the King of England uh, as a present on his birthday. So you've got you got a ship. The most expensive object in the world, and it's only that big, all the way across the world, in those days, you're talking weeks worth of travel, and there's a massive amount of publicity around it. So everybody wants to steal this. <coughs> Anybody know what they did? Put it in the post. You what? Put it in the post. I'm, I'm gonna, you are, you, you're in the lead. <laughs> you are, it, it's, it's heading your way. Um, yeah, they did, they just put it in the post. Sent it Royal Mail. But what they also did was they, they, they had a huge show around a huge um, security guards and, all, and made it all you know, high publicity so that everyone could see, it, see the Cullinan and Diamond be in this you know, carriage or whatever it was on, on the ship. And, 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 and <clears throat> that was the focus of it. So every, you know, now no one did uh, attempt to, to steal it. But if they had it done, they wouldn't have got anything because it was it had already gone in the purse. Now, what 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 does that teach us about what we do? Um, well, I I, th I think the key thing with it is that you know is that attackers don't play by the rules, right? <laughs> so we can we we've got some leeway as well to do that. And 
you know, we can we can use whatever is at our disposal. We uh, if we and I suppose the modern equivalent is something like the honey pot or the honey net, where uh, on your network you'll set something up that an attacker is going to go for. Uh, I know when I, I I've worked in one or two places where they've done that, but most places actually don't seem to make as much use of it as they should, I think. I think it's a really useful tool. Um, one of my jobs in, in a previous was a previous uh, place was to go and check, go and check them, see, has anybody logged in there? Have you seen any activity on it? Easy job to do is just have a look, have a look at the web logs. Yeah. Um, anyone able to uh, decipher that? Um, that's a, there's actually a date on there, 1917, which I think is quite yeah, uh, appropriate. A hundred years ago, uh, this was a telegram sent by the Germans uh, to Mexico, um, asking Mexico uh, to attack uh, the USA. The Zimmerman telegram. Another, another fascinating story. Um, they, has anybody played a game of Risk? You remember that game where you took a... Well, these guys were doing it like with real countries, right? And so basically what the Germans said was, look, yeah, you take that bit of America and we'll have the rest of it and you know, we'll do a deal and, and, and attack America. And, and they, yeah, they offered Mexico like Texas, I don't know, the, all, the, the, all the hot dry bits. And the Germans got all the, uh, all the, all the better bits. Well, the Mexicans didn't go for it. Um, this was intercepted by British intelligence in 1917. It was decrypted. And they, they realized that actually this was dynamite. This was absolute pure dynamite because if the Americans knew that the Germans, because America wasn't in the war at that stage. If the, if the Americans knew that this is what the Germans were doing, they, it would bring them out uh, onto our side. So, so the British had a difficult, difficult, uh, car, uh, difficult hand to play, if you like, because they were actually reading, well, pretty much everyone's uh, messages. This went through a place in Cornwall, um, and it, that's where it was intercepted and it was de decrypted. They, they, were, they were reading everyone's, everyone's messages, including our allies, the Americans. So they couldn't say, oh, we just, we just happened to read your, you know, we couldn't, you, it was going through America. So they, 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 they made up a story about it being uh, stolen from a, by a spy in Mexico, gave it to the Americans, the Americans saw it, came in on our side, and that, you know, shortened the war. Um, I mean, that in itself, to me, if I was an American, i say, well, the English wants to join the war on their side, and they've just given us this bullshit telegram <laughs> um, to try and drive into the yeah. war on their side. Yeah, I, I think there must have been a bit more to it, but, to it than that, but yeah, I mean, effectively, it did, it did, it did work. Okay. And I mean, I think that's, that's, you know, that's one example. Same thing happens again in, in the Second World War, is that... You know, the Allies won the intelligence war. Anybody? Enigma. Enigma. The Enigma machine, yeah. And we were, we, by all accounts, one step ahead of the Germans. The Germans were improving their, this all the time um, through capturing these and some really clever people at Bletchley Park doing the analysis. We, we were one step ahead. Um, and and, it, and it, it was an absolutely crucial factor in saving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives, the fact that we knew what the Germans were doing. Um, and apparently, again, it, uh, is there a lesson to be learned from that? The, 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 the technology was good. By, by all accounts, it was the, the fact that people weren't doing it properly. There was the process that, that, that they failed on. So, yeah, you know, that, that, that tells us a lot. But um, very important stuff. Right. Um, I love this guy. Um, Bring it up today. Um, I would never, I, until I started putting this together, I didn't know who that was. No one knows who he is. This, this guy is called Clifford Cox. Anybody? From GCHQ. Um, and in 1973, he invented um, what we now call RSA um, public key um, encryption. So it was, it was invented. Uh, in 1973, but of course, being GCHQ, mm, they kept it quiet. In 1976, 
um, the three Americans, and I, I yeah, I can't. Rives Shavir and Adelman. That's it. Rives Shavir and Adelman. Also, quite separately, came up with the same thing, um, and took all the you know it's now called RSA. Took all the credit for it, and and this guy, um, it wasn't actually released until about. 20 years afterwards that he'd invented it on his own <laughs> in GCHQ, got no credit for it really. Um, but um, I found that quote now part of nearly every internet transaction. I mean, maybe that's a bit dated, I don't know, but, but certainly absolutely fundamentally important uh, when it comes to security on the internet. Um, I bet you, I can just imagine him sat at his desk when they all, you know, and they're getting all this credit for it. He's thinking, I did that. I did that. I did. You with a lot of credit. Oh, no, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did. It could have been me. Yeah. Except he's a lot cleverer than me. Um, and I was going to, I was going to actually do, uh, go through this. It, it, about a year ago, um, someone asked me, um, one of our colleagues, Chu, asked me about how does, how does encryption work, Steve? And I'm like, so I started explaining it, and then I thought, you know, I need to, I need to really prove this to myself, um, and so I did, um, to a certain extent, and I went through it, and and I did the maths, uh, and it's and it's really quite interesting, and and I think you know, this is a this is a hacking convention, hacking in a sense that you take something apart to understand really how does it work, and I would I would strongly advise, you know, strongly recommend doing that because it. You, if you really want to understand it, you've got to take it to pieces. And and I, and I feel now that I do. I feel like I, you know, I really understand how this works. Um, it does involve maths, um, and you've got to. Choose, you can do it yourself. And basically, it's four steps. Um, you you choose you choose some numbers, and two of them have got to be prime numbers, okay? Because it's all around prime numbers. Um, first step is then once you've chosen your numbers, you've you then have to get the public key from from those three numbers that you've chosen, which are your private key. So the private key, three numbers, you keep those, you keep those secret. <laughs> the public key is a direct function of the private key. It is derived from those three numbers. So you do that. Um, there's two stages to it. The first stage is you just multiply those two prime numbers together. So so the mathematical skill involved is not that great in that first part. It's just something times something else. The second bit is a bit more involved because you have to find the lowest common multiple. But of course, we've got the internet, right? Maths is fun. Maths is fun. My wife's a maths teacher. So. <laughs> maths is fun. And, it, and you, you can put the numbers in there if you don't want to work it out yourself. Um, and it gives you... It, you, you you, you then do some, there's a bit of remainder maths in there as well. Um, so, you, so, you got, so you've got your private key, you've got your public key, then you just choose some, some value for your message text. And then you encrypt it with your public key, you get your cipher text, and then this is the exciting bit, this is when you, this, this brings out the real geek, the real nerd in you, which is <laughs> you decrypt it, and ta -da, you get your original message back. Whoa. Numbers, real numbers. You pick the numbers, you do it, you know it works, right? It's brilliant. I love it. I love this stuff. Um, the caveat to this is that you're gonna, you might need some help, right? Um, the internet is great. Having your wife as a math teacher is even better, because I must admit I got stuck on it. Uh, the, the main problem is that numbers get very big, very quick. So the example that I did I chose, I think I chose the, the, a value of 20, um, and then the ciphertext was 180, and I, so, I, so the, I chose low numbers, right, I try and keep it small, but to decrypt it, I had to have 180 to the power 59, right, that's a big number, but, you know, it, it, I, uh, you can, that, that particular site there, you can, you put that in, and it's great, it just gives you the whole number, it's like fills the screen like this. The other thing I did, which was quite funny, is if you if you've got a, a Alexa, you know, or a, an AI, just ask it what what's. I did it last night just for fun. You know, it's still going now. It's still still talking in our house. Yeah. What Alexa? What is, I was going to bring it in. Alexa, what is uh, 180 to the power 59? And there were words I've never heard, but it, it's a big number. It's a big number. Um, 
or you can use the, 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 there is module math in there again but if ideally you, you should do it yourself but you can prove it with that you can prove it you can just put those numbers in there and it works um what's the important thing about this the really important thing is that as far as i know in terms of the maths you can't crack it right it's just a function of maths it's just something fundamental um, from an attacker's point of view if you've got um, the public key you know the method by which whoever created that public key did it but you but so you know what the outcome is and you know the method to get to that outcome but there's no way back right so it's not crackable but it is guessable in the sense that if you keep trying to guess it you, you will get there right I'm going, I'm going to come, come on to that in a bit conscious of time conscious of time. I'm not going to get through all this massively over slided this presentation anyway it's guessable if the, the key size is small enough it, or if you've got enough time yeah if you've got enough, yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah um, I wanted to make a quick a quick mention about about um, these guys the intelligent community um, we're, we're, the, the title was nothing's changed everything's changed we, we've done through all the stuff where where we're saying nothing's changed but actually we're now looking at instead of looking at the glass half full we're looking at it half empty and saying right okay well actually some things really have changed and i think particularly for, for intelligence services because as we've seen in in 1917 british intelligence was pretty much top dog really they were able to intercept pretty much anybody's uh, messages decrypt them and knew what was going on and since then the power has shifted away from the intelligence community uh, to these guys anybody steve jobs bill gates gets a bit harder the google guys <laughs> zuckerberg zuckerberg and <laughs> even harder. It's, it's a good guess. I think it's Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Bezos, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, they, these are these are the people that are now have the power because they, you know, the the, the encryption works as far as we know. Um, and despite what. People think, you know, they, you know, they, I know that I know the NSA has got the power, and uh, you know, um, the, the intelligence services in this country, but they can't. These are the people that are really controlling the intelligence, really controlling the modern world, from my, from my mind. Okay. Um, getting back to encryption, and and what we were just saying before about it's not crackable, but it is guessable. So the idea, so the, what, I mean, what I mean by that is that you can, in the same way that you, you brute force in a hash, hashing, hashing is a, basically the same principle, is that you, you keep trying random guesses and, and you keep a record of what you've guessed until the outcome matches the outcome of the, what you're trying to get and then you've guessed it, right? The problem, as, as Adrian was saying, is that that can take an awful lot of time. And, and that's what and that's what keeps the internet as it is safe is that it is possible to for somebody if they've got enough time and enough computing power to 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 um, to read to, to read those messages they're not cracking it as such but they are guessing it um, and that's what's that's what's keeping everything going but the world that we're moving into, and I think um, this is this is the bit that really fascinates me, is is this. Anybody seen one of those? Anybody got one in the garage? Because if you have, can I come round? Anybody? Quantum encryption. Yeah, exactly quantum. Yeah, quantum quantum computed. That's apparently that's a DUF. I think they're about ten million ten million dollars. Um, I have no idea how that how that shit works at all. I, yeah, I know, I know, just it just blows my mind. But apparently, the thing with these things is, is that it just runs. In it just, I don't know how it works. It's just and it and it can um, guess. 
phenomenal, phenomenally quickly, um, uh, you know, what, what, the, what the encryption is. So it is going to, if, if it does work in the, say, in the way they say it's going to work, uh, then it's going to change everything because it, it's going to break all the encryption that, we've, that we're really using at the moment. And we're going to have to come up with a new form of encryption. Now, there are lots of ideas around that. And the best one is the kind of the idea of the one-time pad. Uh, but those kind of things, um, yeah, this is going to change the world. No, no question about it if it, if it does. Um, the other one I think that I, I, I... There was a paper the other week came out on that. On that um, uh, I think it was Matthew Green um, looked at whether, whether RSA could be made to scale for quantum computing. Oh, right, okay. As, as long as he used one terabyte key, is it okay? One terabyte key. <laughs> now, now uh, compared to what we're using at the moment, which is uh, two or four eight bits. Right. So two two or four or nine six bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like so it's like a, what a billion times oh, bigger. Yeah, I can't even tell you how much bigger it is. But yeah. So if we yeah, so that's never going to work, right? So yeah, <laughs> but, that's, that's really interesting. It could be difficult. Thank you. No, uh, yeah, it could be difficult. That could be a challenge. Um, I think the other thing that's going to change, and, and again, has anybody got uh, anybody got one of these? Uh, uh, my son bought my wife one for Christmas, and it was just like it just we just had such a lot of fun with it. And uh, yeah, I, there's the, you look at it from a kind of rational point of view and go, well, there's actually nothing inherently clever about anything that it's doing. But when you put it all together, and the voice recognition, I mean, I have no it has no problem understanding me. Some people, you know, I, it, 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 yeah, no, which is not true of most of the people that I work with, but, but it doesn't. It, and, and it's just, it just starts to get a bit spooky, really, a bit spooky, really quick. So that is, you know, when, when that is going to change things. Um, the films, anybody know, anybody got those films? AI in films? Yeah. Blade Runner, that's my favourite. I love Blade Runner. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not get through everything. So I'm just gonna say a little bit, a little bit. How, how far? Where, where's a good place to stop? I guess. Um, yeah, just do the next, next couple of slides, and then, then um, stop for some questions. I, th I think one of the, one of the other things about our, our business, which is not like any other of the established professions, um, and I've, I've, I've encountered this, is that because everything's so new, everything's so just changing all the time it is it is a blackness paradise this this business i mean i mean there are people i've met um if you compare it to say for example law or medicine um where all right things change over time but in this business you know what what was happening five years ago may you know may not have no relevance anymore this is absolutely a blackness paradise and 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 all you need, really, some of the people that I've met, is, is that all they need to know is just a bit more than the recruiter, a bit more than the interviewer. And if you've had anything to do with recruitment agencies, some of them, you don't need to know much. Let's put it that way. Um, and so you meet, I, I mean, uh, one, one guy I met who, who was, when I first started, actually, at VT, came to sat next to me, a lovely guy, and he, was, um, he told them that he'd got CCNA. And he had a problem with his computer. And I said, well, what's your IP address? And he said to me, what's an IP address? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had to, uh, had to let him go. <laughs> he, he told lies. Um, all, you need, all you need, really, is uh, self-confidence, a little bit of knowledge. My dad always referred to it as uh, more front than Brighton, and not really care. <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't care. If, I, if, if you know, somebody puts me in front, he puts me in charge of their security. I don't really know what I'm doing, but they're paying me a lot of money. Well, that's well, that's one of the downsides of this business, I'm afraid. Um, and there's a lot of them. Um, I'll do this slide, and then I'm not going to get through everything, and then um, stop, stop for some questions. Um, so. What, what, what would I, what, what's, what's the, what kind of significant events do I think has happened in this time? Everyone's got, everyone's got their personal favorites. 
this one for me was where I came in. This was sequel Slammer. Um, old school, very old school. Uh, worm caused havoc at BT where I was working. Uh, they, they, uh, it was the reason really why I became involved in ICT security. I got a job on the network team and you know, the rest was history. Interesting, interesting. Um, um, and then Configure, which was around 2008. And, and um, that's what I would say was the last of the old school worms. I mean, I know, I know people are saying WannaCry has a worm, but this actually, as far as up until then, they were, there was no kind of financial re reward for any of this stuff. It was just done for laughs, really, just, just for the hell of it. Um, the world changed, really, after that. When, when the criminals, in particular, realised that you could make money, and when the nation states realised you could make money, uh, get power, uh, steal intelligent, uh, intellectual property, that's when the world changed. And Configure, I think, was the, was the end of that old world. Um, the new world, Stuxnet, probably, probably the, you know, I think, if, if, if anybody's not seen the BBC4 programme on Zero Days, that's really good to say it's, it's mainstream TV. It's really, really worthwhile watching. Um, I'm going to finish with a, with a, with a true story. This, I'm only halfway through the presentation, but you know, that's my fault for not, for not uh, rehearsing it. But um, um, Stuxnet, anybody? We've all heard of Stuxnet. Yeah. <coughs> it's what? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Who said that? <coughs> yeah. It's what, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so the idea was that they, it was the first kind of real proper, to my knowledge, cyber weapon. They were they were using it to destroy the uh, Iranian nuclear facility facility at, at Natanz. Um, they got it in there. It, it had worm capability. It identified the centrifuge. It got on there. It really absolutely thrashed the hell out of this centrifuge and blew it up. Worked. Proved a point, right? You don't need bombs and planes. Just just have some well-written malware. So, I came across that. A few years later, I'm working for a well-known supermarket in the north of England. Um, and they were building out a sock. And we started to collect... Uh, we got a SIM tool put in, and we're starting to look at AV alerts coming in. Um, and again, one of our colleagues was, was there with me at the time. Um, and so we sat there looking at all this, and there were thousands of them. And, and you know, I mean, they had, a lot of, they had a lot of problems with the network. There was a lot of malware on there. So where do you start? So we're looking through all this, uh, and it's the usual stuff. They've still got Configure on there. They've still got, you know, gene all the generic stuff. And then... I'm screen after screen of this stuff, and then that just jumped out. I'm like, "What? You got?" And this, this, the guy I was working with was pretty new, and he said, "What? What? What's up? What's up? What's up?" And I, that's Stuxnet. They got Stuxnet on this network. And what, yeah, what's Stuxnet? So I told him what it was. He's like, All right, "We need to do something about this because this, you know, this this is a, this is." A. So it turned out that this was on a. It was picked up. They the the the, the supermarket um, basically. Um, had bought their supply chain. So one of, the, one of the suppliers was a pie company in Wakefield. And that's where it was. So <laughs> I, had to phone, I had to phone up uh, this, the pie company in Wakefield and say, I need to talk to somebody about this particular computer because it's got malware on and we're concerned about it. And sure enough, it was connected to a Siemens device. And it's like, it was really noisy. And the guy's going, you what? Stuxnet? <laughs> no, I can't turn it off. It'll stop. It'll stop producing pie. I'm like, well, it's going to blow up. And I just had these visions of an exploding pie factory. Like, it's good. You do need to do something about this. And, and now, as it turned out, as it turned out, it was on. It was. It was Stuxnet. It was on there. It had got on. It had identified. But because it wasn't the the same what PLC thing, it just went. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do anything. And it, and it didn't. But um, you know. <laughs> it was it was interesting for a time. Um, I'm going to stop there because I've run out of time. Um, I'm going to give the prize. 
Actually, have I got, have I got another slide? Right? No. I, the, the prize is, is in keeping with, with the theme, which is around how do you spot, how do you spot fakes um, from the real thing? Um, so it's a, it's a genuine uh, Rolex watch, <laughs> um, which I'm going to present to this gentleman here for, for his, I think you just about, you just about won that one, yeah. Um, if you want the, the certificate of authenticity, just let me know, I've got, I've got, um, some graphic software, I can just knock you one up there, it's no problem. Download one. Yeah, just download one, yeah, yeah. Um, how to spot fakes, I mean, it says Rolex on it, so it's, it's got to be a Rolex. Yeah, so, um. That that was that was it. I yeah. Um, are, are there any questions? Or or any kind of? Any... No, I mean, one, one, an observation is the fact that we've not necessarily learned the basics. So if we've moved towards weaponized malware. We're dealing with government agencies, but we've not picked some of the basics. Our patching, basic auditing, basic logs, some of the basics of defence. Some companies still have moved on. You know, big boxes of blinky lights and expensive, you know, expensive purchase orders. But we're not getting the basics in order. So absolutely, from a from a defending point of view, sometimes you just need to go back to the basics and just get the basic principles in place. You know what? That that absolutely. I mean, it's it's it, it's it gets missed because it's so obvious. But you know, the, one of the things I find I'm saying lots of different places is this: is that you know, if you're going to defend something, you got to know what you're defending, right? That's that's so obvious, isn't it? But a lot of places, they it's like, well, we don't. You've got this kit, have we? Yeah, that's that's on your network. Oh, oh right. <laughs> how, can, how can you expect me to protect it if we don't know what it is? You know, it's it is. You got to do the you got to do the basics right. You, you know, um, you've got to get the right people. You've got to have the processes. You've got to have the technology. Um, and 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 I, and I think um, you know from again from a defender point of view, a lot of the times when I've uh, with the contracts. Again, this is this kind of human nature is that I've been brought in afterwards <laughs> when they've been breached and sort this shit out, you know. And it's like, okay, well, where are your logs? We ain't got any. You've no chance. You have no chance if there's no logs. So, you know, just basic stuff. What do the logs tell you? They tell you everything. You know, if you've got, if, if every, every, pretty much everything on your network is going to create logs. Um, if you've got all those in something that's relatively searchable easily, you can figure out what went wrong, and you can, but if you haven't got that basics, then you know. A lot of the challenge is getting the funding to put the basics in place. It's much easier to get funding for the latest new shiny, yeah. this will fix the world kit, oh, so that you don't know how to turn on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we have, yeah, Cyber Dazzle. <laughs> yeah, we want some Cyber Dazzle. It comes out of a different budget, doesn't it? So it comes out of a capital budget rather than a revenue budget that you actually need to maintain the system. It's, it's always easier to find yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's a, that's a that's a good, really good observation. Yeah. Well, I've never yet seen it work. The, the, the buy-in something it doesn't solve some problems. So it's generally there to solve. Yeah, never, never fully. I've seen it work once. Yeah, and that's because they bought a log system. And, and what did what did they buy? Oh, right. Yeah, I'm a bit. I'm a big fan. Best investment. Yeah, yeah. That it's. You've got you've got to put the right people, people behind, behind it, but also you've got to get the, the logs into it, right? But yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is, as an industry, we're aware of that. We know that getting business to buy into that is the big is yeah. the big challenge. And as an industry, we're kind of stuck until we manage the persuasion. <coughs> Absolutely. A bit persuaded once they get breached. Well, but, but that's only to a point, though. Actually, if you get breached and someone says to them, "Hey, you've been breached. We can sell you this," they're going, "Yeah." Yeah. So you might get a bit better. Yeah. The experience is they'll get, they'll have an issue, maybe not a breach, but they'll have an issue, and they'll fix that to the ultimate decimal point. They'll ignore everything else. Yeah. The the key is understanding what you've got, and that's why the log management stuff was was useful to you. Yeah. Um, Putting in something new that you don't understand doesn't help you understand your environment. No. Yeah. What you need is something to help you understand what you actually have got. Yeah. Because we're taking in more and more software all the time. Um, and you, you just trust the people that it comes from most of the time. Um, unless you I, understand what it's doing, then you can't secure it. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, th I think I think there was a real false start with 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 sim tools, which was first gen sim tools, pretty much none of them in my experience, and I've used most of them. Envision, ArcSight, McAfee Sim, Logrhythm. They just can't cope with the amount of data. That that's been the basic problem. Um, and then and there was a lot of you know I, I always used to use that I always misquoted Churchill as I think it was, um, what was it what you said is um, more money has been wasted on 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 um, uh, more products for less less return than anything in history of those products. So but we we are, we we are now I think we are getting better tools now for that kind of thing. Whether you go something like you know a fundamentally better database, something like Splunk or Elastic. Um, big data you can, we can do it but yeah anyway I'm, I'm conscious of time I did promise uh, that I wouldn't roll over run and I mm -hmm. so um, thanks thanks for the uh, help with that I needed it <laughs>